Hello everyone, welcome to JS Gigs and my name is Deepak. Here in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the architecture of Cypress. And we'll also see why it is faster from Selenium. And we'll also see why it is so popular and why it is picking up pace and why many, many developers are using Cypress for their primary tool for their automation, right? So we are, we are going to be covering all of that. Along with it, we will understand uh, what is the architecture of Cypress, how it is similar from Electron JS, and we will also try to see their code base and we'll try to understand you know how it should really work in real life and how the cli works and stuff like that right so this is going to be an overview of its architecture and the differences with selenium and other tools around it and also we are going to be talking a little bit about electron js per se right so so if you look at my screen carefully you would notice that cypress architecture diagram is having basically two processes so one is the node.js process and the other one is the browser process right so also called as render process so those who have been working in javascript domain can can pretty much relate this to electron js right so what is electron js like so let me just try to open electron js as well here on the browser so and then if you click on it you would understand that you know, what i'm talking about so here is this is the underlying technology used behind creating a tool something similar to cypress right so if you come here and look at the docs and then here uh, you can basically see the showcase so here are our, there are some of the most popular apps used in yeah in 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 the developers community are written by electron or or are written on top of electron so the electron is basically the underlying technology behind all of these tools such as um one password isana right figma microsoft teams postman so these are some of the most popular applications that are used popularly by the developers and these are all written by electron js although you don't see cypress available pretty much here but then if you search carefully and if you look at the code base of cypress you would understand that cypress is also written on top of electron js right so um, let me now let me take you back to uh, the architecture diagram and i'll try to explain you something about the electron js right so uh let me just open the pen first so there is a pen right so let's just see so here the we are going to be talking about electron js first the architecture and its similarity with the cypress i'm going to be making two boxes first right so the first is render and then the other one is node right and let me just write so if you look closely node.js and renderer all right so if you look closely over here the renderer is responsible for your application to run and the ui that you see on your screen is basically responsible for renderer however node.js is the one the main process per se it controls all the renderer and then it receives data from renderer and keeps it updated and basically node is the one which communicates with the operating system right so this is uh, pretty much the overview of electron js architecture and now not, let's just try to compare that with the cypress architecture right so here also you have a node js uh, process sitting here and then you have a browser process the browser process is the one which is responsible for rendering the ui as you can see that it has two iframe precisely the first iframe is the one wherein you would see the cypress related code and the cypress related uh, ui and this, the second iframe is the iframe wherein you would render the application right so here if you notice carefully so let me just try to remove this part as well so let me remove this this and this and let's just see what it is right so if you look closely over here you would notice that web sockets are the sockets that communicates with the cypress test and then it has a two-way arrow going in and coming out from the browser process and then the the browser process is basically started by the start process over here as you can see right so essentially if i were to give numbers to it i would say this is the step number one right this is the step number two and this is the step number three right so first of all the browser process is started by by the cypress node.js process and something similar to what you find in the in the in the electron js setup and then the node.js process is the one which controls the proxy and also communicates with the web 
and Node.js process is the one which communicates with the OS, something similar to Electron.js as well, right? Now, if you look closely over here, this is the browser. The browser process is the one which is responsible to render your UI at the same time render the Cypress related UI wherein you would see what are the tests that have run and how it works, right? So now there is another thing to note, which is people say that, uh, or before I start explaining what, uh, you know, Cypress and how it is better, let me just try to erase all of this, right? So do this and remove I leave everything around here and also remove everything over here right so if you look closely um you would notice that cypress is basically controlled by the node.js environment as you can see over here right so this is the node.js environment which talks to the operating system directly and then the, this is the one which controls the browser and cypress related test so there is no multiple layers or drivers or anything like that right so you can understand that if something is communicating if a process is communicating to the operating system directly and also controlling the web browser without having to write many other driver related code it has to be faster faster than selenium so let me just bring up the selenium architecture diagram so here if you notice that this is the selenium this is particular diagram i have taken up from the selenium website itself right so if you notice here in the host system, first of all, it's the web driver. And then once the web driver is available, it basically opens up the Chrome driver or Firefox or anything like that. And then which is when, which is what that opens the browser. So the browser opens up um, in the end, and then your driver communicates with your main process to the browser. So whatever command that you pass from your web driver to the browser, it is basically done through the driver web driver in this case particularly you see chrome driver but then you have the similar sort of driver available for firefox and other brow popular browsers as well right so now you can understand that um you know a process at one hand which is directly communicating with the browser and updating it and then a process which is communicating through the driver so there are three layer and there's just one layer which works right so which has to be faster the one over here right so that is why people have started choosing uh, Cypress okay, Cypress uh, for their tests, unit testing and end-to-end -end testing. And Selenium is the one which is the older technology and all the other Selenium-based tools basically more or less work on the similar sort of architecture pattern which wherein you have three layers to talk to browser and get communication done and get your tasks done and to run your, uh, and to run your test cases, right? Whereas in the uh, Cypress, architecture you communicate with the browser directly right so that's why it is faster so now uh, let me just try to recap all of it so firstly what we understand is that cypress architecture we have seen that it, it is a basically a two-layered process the one is the node.js which is the main process and then you have a render process which is a browser process wherein you your application is rendering and node.js process is the process which is responsible for holding the proxy and also communicating with the operating system at the same time talking to web Right, and then through WebSocket, it communicates with the Cypress uh, test and gets the update. And then you have the other iframe wherein your DOM renders, and then you see all of it available. Right, so all right, so here's the difference. They, 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 this is all about the difference between Cypress and Selenium. Now, I'm going to be talking about another important aspect, which is uh, you know how these two test cases run in the CI pipeline. So both of them, Selenium and Cypress have capability to run in the headless mode, which means that you don't really need a proper Windows operating system or you don't really need any other operating system or a different system to run your test cases, meaning they can, once the Chrome, headless Chrome starts. So what do you mean by headless Chrome? Okay, before I start explaining what uh, what each of each one of this is, the headless Chrome is a Chrome wherein you don't really need a GUI to run, right? So it runs in the background, just like a pain, just like any other process for you and then it runs all of its test cases so cypress is uh, cypress shines here because although selenium also has the headless chrome and headless firefox available to run the test cases cypress also has its native um, you know native feature right so if you uh, go to the cypress documentation you would notice um, or, or let me just take you there right so cypress cloud right so here um let's say i'll open the faq section um, Right, so let me just take you to the 
continuous integration part so here you can see that you know cypress can basically run in the background without really having to start your browser first in order to run the application right so um so now uh, cypress also run, basically runs on the docker image and then you can basically start in the, in the background and then once it starts in the background it records all of it and there are, it has many of the features as well that we will see um when we go to those places and when we start writing the test cases actually but then uh, just to give you a gist of it it is basically all possible for your cypress test cases to run in the ci pipeline right so which is very very important because um, what, what really happens is that when your Cypress or, or any other testing tool that you of your choice, it doesn't really run in the CI, it creates a lot of problem for you, right? But then here in case of a Cypress, it is readily available just like uh, Selenium. And then, you know, you, you your test cases run pretty much uh, anywhere with the system, without the system, using the headless. So uh, this is all about uh, running and then the similarity also between the Cypress and Selenium now i would want to take you to the cypress um, github page right so here if you look at uh, the cypress github page you may notice that all its code is available as you see that it has the mit license yes, as you can see over here now if i were to look into you know what really how it really works is that so uh, what i would do is like i'll try to get inside these scripts and here you see all of it is available let me close this down and then here you have a tooling you see this is electron uh, mkm mk snapshot so which means basically it it has the electron js code as well written inside it and as i said that it is basically uh, it is written on top of electron js so it it shares its architecture principle as you've just seen and i've explained just a while ago right so um, this comes here you have a test here so you can see that it is a v8 snapshot so v8 what do you mean by v8 so v8 is basically a browser engine um v8 is a similar engine which powers node.js and then on top of v8 when chrome released it way way back in 2006 or probably a little earlier than that um node.js meaning the ryan dell the person who invented node.js or who wrote the node.js code for the first time took a fork of it and started um, you know started experimenting with it and then came, they came up with the node.js and after the advent of node.js things just changed right so there are a lot of innovation happened in this area particularly in the last 10 years in the ui sphere uh, earlier prior to 2009 and 2006 javascript just used to be considered as a, as a scripting language and nothing more right but then now everyone uh now javascript basically runs the internet i must say that you know in the cloud and in the native browser and in the local system whatnot right you can create almost anything with javascript you know whatever that you whatever device that you have maybe it is a smart device phone um your watches your smart watches your operating systems your 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 linux or unix based system anywhere you go you can basically run javascript code uh, thanks to node.js and its runtime environment right so now coming back to cypress so here if you want to see more about it like you can basically come here and and then and, and you know and then look at the code and can see you know how it really functions internally but then um you know these these are some of those um these are some of these code uh, which is available for you to see so I just wanted to give you a gist of uh, you know what it is like. Um, firstly, we understand that it works on Node.js. Uh, it it works on the Electron JS architecture. Once it works on Electron JS architecture, so you would find Electron JS code available here. It has all these scripts available. It comes with the MIT license, so you are pretty much um, free to change the code the way you like. In case if you have very advanced use case, but then Cypress tool, in my opinion, is pretty much good enough for you to just take uh, you start installing and start fiddling around it, right? So but then it is important for you to just keep a note of it that this is um this is the github page of um, you know cypress so you can find all the cypress related code inside it right so now um now let me take you back to the v the the dashboard and here this is uh, so that's all about uh, you know cypress architecture and this is all about this particular tutorial and here in this tutorial what we have really learned is you know how cypress really works what Cypress is based on, which is Electron JS, and how it is different from Selenium, and why it is faster, and can it run on CI? Yes, it can run on CI. So from the next tutorial onwards, we are going to be covering most advanced cases, wherein, wherein we would try to see, you know, how the how to write the test cases for your login and different component in Angular. 
and we'll also try to see uh, you know we'll also try to do the setup so this is all about architecture only for this tutorial so i'll see you in the next tutorial when we'll we'll try to install the cypress js uh, we'll we'll install the cypress and also at the same time start writing the test cases and write our first test case right so thanks a lot ladies and gentlemen for listening and all that while and if you're liking my work please don't forget to subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon in case if i post a new video you would be notified with that i just want to end this tutorial and i'm going to be seeing you in the next one thanks a lot for listening in i'll see you in the next one